Hello everybody, this is Eric Meek from www.finalcutstudioschool.com and this is the beginning of a Final Cut Pro 6 work through DVD. I'm going to take you from beginning to end and hopefully along the way you'll learn how to use this wonderful application from Apple and may become quite proficient in the process. So let's go over a quick workflow or at least let's look at my workflow in Final Cut Pro. The first thing you always want to do is plan. Plan, plan, plan. I can't, I can't stress it enough how important it is to plan. Make sure you know what you want to do, or at least in a roundabout way. Know where you're going to get your project elements, how you're going to get your project elements, and maybe even sort of a rough draft idea of what you want to do. Planning is always the first step, not just in editing, but in anything that you're going to do in life. Next, you want to collect all your media together, whether it be still frames, JPEGs, TIFF files, dot .movie files, HD clips, HDV clips, whatever it may be. Collect all of your media before ever touching an, an editor. Um, then, you want to kind of build your story. After you've collected all your media, you want to kind of build the story in your mind. Get a rough draft of what you want to take place and what you want the story to be about. After you figure that out, you need to organize your story. And that means putting your clips together in a rough way that kind of makes sense, nothing carved in stone, just kind of a little organization to your thought. Um, the next step after organizing your story, before you trim your video, you want to complete the organizational process. This is having everything how you want it in the timeline, in the order that you want it in the timeline. So you can go on to the next step, which will be to trim your video. And trimming your video is, of course, editing. Putting this shot here, that shot there, taking a little bit off here or adding a little bit there. And then after you've got your edits together, this is when you want to add your transitions. Always add transitions before you add effects and text. Always. That's just my rule of thumb. I don't have a specific reason for it, but I've just found it always works best for me. After you add transitions, you want to add effects and text. Effects and text should be one of the last things you do because it could get in the way of your final project if you try to do it beforehand. Some people like to time their text to audio, some people like to time their effects to text. And if you don't do them at the end and both at the same time, you could get disorganized and I just like to do it that way. And the last step, finish the audio if there is any at all. Some people have projects that don't have any audio, but 85% of projects out there do have audio, and audio is the last thing you want to do. And of course, after you finish your audio, you want to export and archive your file. That's when you want to go into color and do any color corrections and stuff after you finish editing your video. But we can get into that later. We're going to focus on Final Cut right now. So let's get into Final Cut a little bit, look at some of the user preferences windows, show you what's going on and how to set it up before we get into editing too much. I know you guys want to play and you're curious to start pushing some buttons and editing and doing all the sexy stuff, but let's set our projects up first, set our Final Cut system up first, then we'll be good to go. So uh, that's next. Now we want to take a look at our preferences and settings. I went over my Final Cut Pro workflow with you. Now before we get in and start doing the sexy stuff, let's look at our settings. So go up to Final Cut Pro and you'll see user preferences, system settings, easy setup, audio and video settings. First of all, easy setup. It just lets you pick the settings for your sequence. I have mine set to all formats in a custom setup, but as you can see, you have all these different formats that you can use. And the reason that it don't list them all is because I have mine set to custom setup. If I had it set to something else, there would be a huge list of, of stuff. So I just use all formats, all frame rates, and I use my own custom settings. And we can talk about my custom settings later. I just use DV NTSC with 48 kilohertz of audio. So that is all your easy setup does. It lets you set up your sequence. Now, if you go to user preferences, this has got some pretty interesting tabs, some pretty useful tabs, but we're just going to fool with the first three, the first four. Levels of undo, pretty self-explanatory. The more you, levels of undo you have, the more memory it's going to take. I have mine set to 99, a lot of people leave it to about 10 or so. 
real-time audio mixing, eight tracks. That's about good for most people. Audio playback quality, don't freak out if it's low. This just means it's going to render faster. And stuff like it's just going to play without dropping frames better. You can you can take it to high or medium. I leave mine on low because on export, it will be the best it can be. Show tool tips. Bring all windows to the front on activation. Open last project on application launch. Now what this does is, if you closed your application, your My Final Cut Pro app, while still working on a project, it will open up that last project you were working on. If it's unchecked, it'll just open up to a blank sequence every time. Auto save vault. I have mine set to about every 10 minutes, but really I save about every 2 minutes most of the time. But this is a good backup in case you can forget. You can set it how many minutes you want it, how often you want it to auto save. And tell it how many copies of the project you want it to keep and the maximum number of copies. So you can have 25 projects with 40 copies of each project. Or you can have 10 projects with 10 copies per project. It's really up to you. This over here. Prompt for settings on new project. Prompt for settings on new sequence. Just ask you what you your uh, easy setup at the beginning I showed you. Just ask you what your sequence is and, and your presets. So I like to uh, have it prompt me in case I want to change anything when I start up. Some people don't like the annoying box that pops up. Sync audio capture to video source if present. Yes, leave that checked. Report dropped frames during playback. This will warn you, hey, you're having dropped frames. But I'm pretty experienced and I don't need that warning, so I'll leave mine off. All this other stuff you want to leave on, we won't worry too much about it. Auto render. Now, auto render is important because it will start to render for you after so many minutes, whatever you set it to. Say that you're in the middle of a project and something comes up, you got to get up and leave, or you're working on another project and you totally forget about it, it will start rendering for you after this so many sequences, after so many minutes. So that way, in case you forget, it will render in the background. Now, that is the general use tab. Let's go to our editing tab. Still freeze frame duration. This is how long the duration of your freeze frame will be if you make one. It's factory default is set to 10 seconds and you can always change that in the viewer. Pre-roll, this is a preview. It will preview two seconds before your edit and a, and a second after your edit. You can set it to keep looping the preview over and over so you can see what you're working on. You can set this for five and three or whatever you want it, want it on. Dupe detection, we don't have to worry about that. Imported still RGB video gamma, leave it on source. Um, any dynamic trimming, yes, I leave that on. Let's see, leave all the others unchecked. I don't want to go through and explain every single checkbox, but I'm just showing you how I keep mine set up. Um, warn if visibility change deletes render file. Yes, this will let you know, hey, you're going to make a change and you're going to have to re-render your clip. That way you, you can, it'll let you know before you do it. And so you won't say, hey, crap, it took me 45 minutes to render that. And I click this button and now it's not rendered no more. This will warn you. Record audio keyframes, reduced, peaks only, and all. I keep mine on reduced. If you put it to peaks only, it will only record on peaks. If you put it to all, it will record everything. So I leave mine on reduced. Pin tools can edit locked item overlays. Leave that unchecked. Always reconnect externally modified files. Yes. Warn on sound to sound. Warn on send to soundtrack pro script. And yes, it's always good to have a warning when you're working on something important. So that's your editing tab. Under labels, you can make them different colors. You can say blue, you could make it used clips, or the red one could be bad clips, so on and so forth. Now we have our timeline, which lets you select your starting time code, your track size. So I like to keep mine on small. Thumbnail display, this will display just the name of the track in the timeline. The name of the track plus a little thumbnail at the beginning, or it will show a thumbnail for every frame which this film strip is really great. You can see every frame in your timeline, but it is very processor intensive. So I just use name plus thumbnail. Track display. This shows you what's going to be displayed when you turn on your overlays. And um, this over here, you don't have to worry about. Default number of tracks. Five and four is what I got mine set to. That means when you open up a blank track, you'll have five video tracks and four audio tracks blank waiting for you. So that is the main controls of your user preferences. There's also render and audio outputs and we'll talk about them later. But I do want to point out master templates and motion projects quality. If you notice that your projects ain't up to full specs, that's because it's not set to best, which means it's gonna if you set it to best it's gonna take a long a lot longer to render and it's not gonna be real time playback ain't gonna be as good. So I leave mine to normal and on export it always goes best. But I always keep this checked, always use best quality when rendering movies. 
and we'll talk about the audio uh, later. So that is your user preferences tab.